Number eight then from paper two of the 2017 New Hire Mass. Here we go, reconciliation. A sequence may be generated by using this relation to generate consecutive terms. Initial term five. You have to show the second term is given by this expression because notice there's an unknown k here multiplying six marks altogether. Well, if you know it's five, that means this generates the following term. So u1 would be, follow that rule, it'll be k times 5 minus 20. I'll just write that as 5k minus 20. In fact, doing that gets the first mark. Which means that u2 will be, follow the rule again, k times u1. So k times, that was the previous term, 5k minus 20, minus another 20, which gives you 5k squared minus 20k, Minus 20, as required, because it said show that. Well, that wasn't too hard, was it? And part B, for four marks, determine the range of values of K. You can know what's happening here, you have a quadratic inequation. Determine the range of values of K for which U2 is less than U0. Well, I'll just express that then. U2 is less than U0. Well, there's U2. 5k squared minus 20k minus 20. And that's to be less than U0, which is 5. And in fact, for doing that, you get a mark. Not only that, you realise now you're going to have to rearrange that to put everything on one side. So 5k squared minus 20k minus 25 is less than 0. There's your quadratic inequation or inequality. That gets a mark. Now you've got to determine the values of k for which this expression is worth less than zero. Basically, you try and find the values of that expression that are equal to zero. Get the zeros of that expression. Then you can consider its graph. And to do that, you want to factorise it. Well, let's just keep the five in. The five's not going to affect it at all, but we'll keep that five in. Five times k squared minus four k Minus 5 is less than 0, so 5 times, and it's a trivial factorisation, k times k, 1 times 5, will be minus the 5 plus the 1. Now that doesn't get you anything. In the marking scheme it says determining the zeros, so stating the zeros. Well the simplest way for you to state the zeros would be to do it the way you should be doing it I suppose, which is consider a picture of it now. What does the graph of that look like? The only crucial point is, where does that graph cut the axis? What are the zeros of that expression? Well, there's one at negative one, and there's one at five. And it's got a positive k squared term, so it must look like this. Those are the values of k along there. Those are just the answers going up the way. You want those answers to be less than zero. This is the portion here. Notice less than zero. So I don't, I'm not going to include zero there. I'm not going to include zero there, so it's the portion between them. Simplest way to write that is, k is, and they said you're going to get a mark if you do that, identifying the negative one and the five, and the sketch counts for this part as well. k has got to be less than five, and at the same time it's got to be greater than negative one. That's the fourth mark. It's best to write it that way. I think they'll let you off if you just put the two in two separate statements. If you just say this, for instance, k is greater than negative 1 with a comma and a k is less than 5. That's been a bit lenient. What you shouldn't say is an or, because that would include all of the real numbers. It's greater than negative 1 or less than 5. That's everything. If you wanted to write it out with a statement in between, that would have to be and meaning both have to be true at the same time, less than five and greater than negative one. So you just stick with this one though. What you can't do at this stage is create two independent inequations because that wouldn't be true. You couldn't say, oh, k plus one is less than zero, k minus five is less than zero because that would be negative and that would be negative and the product would be positive. So don't try and do that. Now, there is another way, which is to use a table of signs. You might see that mentioned, which is simply this. How can you evaluate this to find when it's less than zero? Well, 
Critical values again are negative 1 and 5, so there they are. Identifying them gets that mark. Then you just have to consider what happens before that, what happens between, and what happens after. And instead of evaluating this here, you can evaluate this instead. But you're not interested in the actual numerical value, it's only the sign of it. Because when you're multiplying terms together, the sign of the answer is formed by the product of those signs. In that respect, that 5 is no use to you. It's going to make no difference. Multiplying by positive won't change a sign. So I've really just got to consider what happens with these two factors. Now, k plus 1 is 0 when k is negative 1. If k is less than negative 1, it'll go negative. If k is more than negative 1, it'll go positive. So it'll be positive forever. k minus 5, that'll be 0 when k is 5. If k is less than 5, it'll be negative. If k is more than 5, it'll be positive. And the product of those two terms will be just multiplying those. A negative times a negative positive, that's zero times anything is zero. That's negative, that's zero, that's positive. And it says it has to be less than zero, so not equal to that. So that means it's lying in here. It's lying between five and negative one. That would be the other way of doing it. To tell you the truth, for quadratics, it's quicker to just sketch the quadratic. 